Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the STR Intelligence Weekly Regulations Roundup. I'm your host, Nora. This week's update covers regulation news in Bedford County, Virginia, St. Joseph, Missouri, Las Vegas, Nevada, Sarasota, Florida, Honolulu, Hawaii, and Hampton, Virginia. We'll start first in Bedford County. The Bedford County Board of Supervisors and Planning Commission adopted a new ordinance to regulate short-term rentals after hearing concerns from residents. Many who live near Smith Mountain Lake complained of overcrowding, parking issues, and septic system misuse at rental properties. They want better oversight of occupant numbers, parking, and septic monitoring. Some noted positive rental experiences, but said issues are mostly near the lake, suggesting differentiated regulations by area. After residents shared experiences, the board unanimously approved the ordinance with updates. Owners must submit management plans each year and designate local contacts to address issues. Guest parking is limited to the property. Violations will be charged to the property, with a three violation limit before penalties. Next up is St. Joseph, Missouri, where the city is considering new short-term rental rules in response to complaints about parking, noise, and large groups at rentals. Proposed regulations include occupancy limits and parking requirements. Operators argue they are meeting traveler demand and improving properties. However, some say the city should instead focus on blight. The city wants to collect revenue taxes, but fears they'll face legal obstacles as short-term rentals are not classified as hotels. St. Joseph aims to balance industry interests with neighborhood concerns as it regulates short-term rentals, but the city expects resistance to any new rules. Our next stop is in Las Vegas, where the process for licensing short-term rentals has faced obstacles, including a judge ruling parts of the ordinance unconstitutional. A pending lawsuit argues the county created an overly complex process hurting owners' livelihoods. After only 255 of the 1,000-plus short-term rental hosts applied for the new license, the county extended the application deadline to the end of August. Hosts argue that the county's regulations are too strict compared to other jurisdictions, with limits on proximity to hotels and other short-term rental properties. Hosts also feel targeted and argue they help tourists visit Las Vegas affordably, which helps the economy. The county defends its approach as protecting housing availability and applying regulations evenly to collect tax money just like they do for hotels. While the court case is pending, enforcement of the new regulations will be complaint-driven, with fines for unlicensed rentals reaching up to $10,000. Let's head to Sarasota, where the city is finding out firsthand that implementing short-term rental regulations isn't as simple as they thought. In May 2021, the city of Sarasota approved new short-term rental regulations requiring hosts to register for a license. The city recently revealed they lose over $100,000 annually by regulating short-term rentals. The city is considering doubling or tripling fees as hosts, on average, are making $650 per night and over $200,000 a year. However, even with the increase in the fee, the city would still be incurring a loss. The commissioners agreed to revisit the ordinance to address the licensing fee and to consider concerns raised by residents who believe STRs are destroying communities and taking away from the available housing stock. Our next stop is in Honolulu where the Honolulu Department of Planning and Permitting is temporarily suspending the 30-day minimum rental period for Oahu vacation rentals in response to the wildfires on Maui and Hawaii Island. The suspension, effective immediately through August 31st, is an effort to increase temporary housing availability for evacuees. Honolulu Mayor Rick Blangiardi directed the suspension and urged short-term rental owners to prioritize housing displaced residents, if possible, at discounted rates. The move aims to provide relief for evacuees in need of safe accommodation. Rounding out the news for this week is Hampton, Virginia. The Hampton City Council has deferred voting on approving new short-term rental applications until November. This pause will allow the city government time to receive legal advice and further study how short-term rentals impact neighborhoods. The council wants to look into issues of density and location. Many applicants are frustrated by the delays after following the new rules enacted in December 2022 to regulate short-term rentals. Hosts argue the city needs short-term rental homes to support tourism growth, and the repeated delays in getting their permits are terrible for their business. The city estimates around 370 short-term rentals were operating before the regulations were approved, 
but only 55 hosts have applied, and only five have been approved. The Council hopes the deferral will give them time to review all of the factors before approving more applications. That's a wrap on this week's Regulations Roundup. Don't forget to visit our YouTube, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on the latest STR regulation news and analysis. We post new videos every week, so hit the bell to get notified when the next one drops. You can also listen to the STR Intelligence Weekly podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Leaving a review helps others find the show. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time for more short-term rental regulation news. This is Nora signing off.